I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the -the behind-the-scenes anecdotes of your favorite shows from the people who were there. Today, we'll continue my conversation with the late, great Rue McClanahan. Today, Rue lets us know how CBS handled controversy and how they handled Maud producer Norman Lear. How the producers dealt with censors, both on Maud and Golden Girls. Rue tells us how she got involved with Golden Girls, what it was like playing Blanche, going through auditions, the pilot, and how she talked B. Arthur into playing Dorothy. How supportive was CBS, do you think, during that period? Because that had to be really tough for them to allow stuff like that on the air. I remember many Tuesday nights is when we taped. Yes, I think. (laughs) We started on Wednesday and ended on Tuesday. And uh, every night that we taped anyway, um, once a week, We'd get right up to the wire. We'd get right up to 8 o'clock, and we would still be censored, and they would say, you you have to change those lines or we're not going to run the show. And Norman Lear stood horn to horn with them every week, and every week he won. Every week we aired the show. So there was some concern. the executives in any TV studio, I mean, any network, are going to be a lot more conservative than the creative people that are doing the programs. And some of the time, there are some shows where I think they go too far, especially lately, terribly far, and not entertainingly so. Um, I won't name any, (laughs) but I didn't find them interesting or amusing or tasteful. Uh, In general, though, in general, we need, I guess it depends on who's in charge. Well, why do you think Norman Lear was able to get away with stuff that other people wouldn't have even thought of trying? Because he had such, has such integrity and such will and He's a lovely, good-natured man, but he'll stand toe-to-toe with anybody for something he believes. We had the same thing on Golden Girls on NBC because the first year they censored us. How's that? Took away some of our best jokes. And there was no outcry from anything in the country. (laughs) The audience loved it. So they let us go on our own from then on. We, we censored ourselves. The writers did. Well, the first two show, the first year, there were two shows. I think it was the very first show where uh, Dorothy and uh, Sophia are playing Scrabble, and um, Sophia finishes a word and gets up to leave, and Dorothy says, "Wait a minute, that's not a word." And uh, Sophia says, yeah, that's a, word. that's a word. She says, oh, yeah, disdam, D-I-S-D-A-M, use it in a sentence. And she says, uh, uh, disdam swimming pool is too hot, something like that. They wouldn't let her say that. Oh, that's what they did let her say. What they wouldn't let her say was so much funnier. Uh, it, the way it was written was, uh, <laughs> oh, something like P-W-A-M, P-E-E-W-A-M, and <laughs> something like that, or Piswam, maybe. And uh, Dorothy said, use it in a sentence, and she said something like, after the kids have been in the pool, the water is Piswam. No, couldn't say that. And that's when they went to Disdam. And the second one was a line of mine where I'm telling a story about one of my country cousins who, uh, whose husband was fooling around with another woman. And she, uh, she got a gun, and uh, the line was, and she shot him in the jujubes. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean anything. Jujubes, you know, aren't jujubes a candy? 
Well, they wouldn't let us use jujubes. So they said, here's the line they came back with. NBC came back with this line. Said, um, so my, my cousin got a gun and shot the cork off his jug. I said, I won't say that. That's much too graphic. <laughs> that really paints a picture. Jujubees is vague, just a funny word. No, I won't say that. So we had to, nobody could think of anything funny. We had to end up saying, shot him in the boxer shorts, which isn't funny. But shot him in the jujubees would have been. There you go. Well, then we got to censor ourselves after that and did a damn fine job, I must say. Our writers were tasteful and still funny and daring. We did some I guess you might call them fairly controversial shows, but because we were older women, we could get away with stuff that younger people couldn't get away with. Right. And I, I didn't even realize that, but Betty did. Betty got it. She knew why, why this was working. They okay. were. <laughs> huh? How does it work? Tell me, what, she, what did she say? What did she, in terms of? Because we were older. Got it. Got it. Because we were older, there was no onus on, on being sexy, right. being being uh, having sexual freedom, and yet Blanche was very sexy, wasn't she? She was oversexed. Well, that's true. Blanche was oversexed. She was obsessed with sex. Was she fun to play? Oh, oh, <laughs> one of the best, one of the three top roles so far in my life. I absolutely, I don't see how anything could top Blanche. When did Blanche? How did you get involved with the show, and when did Blanche become real for you? My agent called and said, I'm, deliver I'm having a script delivered to your house, a new script by Whit Thomas Harris called Golden Girls. It arrived at my house. The messenger brought it to the door. I took it out of the envelope. I looked at this script, and I said, I could just tell from the way it looked, just on the outside. This is a hit. I know this is a hit. And I started reading. Well, I called my agent back and I said, oh, I really do want to audition for the role of Blanche. She said, they're really almost decided on Betty White, but they want you to come in and read for Rose. Oh, I said, but I'm not a Scandinavian nitwit. I'm a Southern Belle. That's what I, I know how to play Blanche. I didn't really know how to play Rose. I, I didn't have a feeling for Scandinavia, for coming from Minnesota. So I went in, and Jay Sandwich, who directed the pilot, listened to me read Rose with the casting director, or the, I don't know who they get it, NBC to do that. And he said, would you do me a favor, rather unorthodox, would you take the script down the hallway and step into one of the spare rooms and look at the role of Blanche? And I said, well, if you insist. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I practically had it memorized. I came back and I read Blanche. He said, thank you, go home. Then they call Betty and me in to read together. Well, she thinks she's coming in to read Blanche. They ask her to read Rose and me to read Blanche and her eyes get round just like Rose's used to do. And she said, Rose? Oh, well, okay. And of course, she did a funny job with it. And the next thing I knew, Susan Harris is calling me on the phone. She was the writer. And she said, can you help us out with B. Arthur? She just won't listen to reason and <laughs> play Dorothy for us. And they had Estelle already. They, they hired her right away to play Sophia because she was doing Torch Song Trilogy, the, the play in, in L.A., and she was brilliant in that play. So they just snapped her right up. Then they decided on Betty and me. Now they needed Dorothy. Well, they'd seen every actress ever born by then. And I said, yes, I'd be glad to call her up and talk sense to her because I've been wanting to work with her again since Maud. So I called her. I said, what's the matter with you? 
passing up the best script that's ever going to come along in your life. She said, Rue, I don't want to play Maud and Vivian meet Betty White. I said, I'm not playing the Vivian part, the ditzy airhead. Betty is. I'm playing the Sue, Mary Sue Mary Nivens, Sue Ann Mary, Nivens. what? Sue Ann Nivens? Sue Ann Nivens part, the, the sexy one. Oh, she said, now that is interesting. Hung up. And the next thing I knew, the three of us are called into NBC for a reading in front of the everybody, you know. The room was bursting with power. And we read. And the next thing I know, we're doing the pilot. I knew from the beginning, I knew from the very beginning, the pilot was such a stupendous hit with the audience and with the, we brought it to New York to, to show it to the syndication, syndicators. And Estelle and I came, and oh my gosh, they were on their feet screaming and cheering. They'd found a show. Well, that's all we have time for now. Next time, Rue McClanahan tells us some of her surprising untold stories. She was supposed to be on soap. She talks about the Norman Lear pilot she worked on with only two episodes ever seen, the never seen show she did with Dabney Coleman, Apple Pie, plus why she left Mama's family. Till then, what was your favorite Golden Girls episode? Let us know in the comments. Please become a Patreon subscriber, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.